All right, it's time to start talking about chemical equations. Now, I like to think of chemical equations as recipes. Just like if you're going to make a pan of brownies, you're gonna need, you're gonna get your brownie mix, look on the back and it's gonna say, okay, you need two eggs, one and a half cups of water, and this package of brownie mix, you do some stuff to it, and you're gonna get out a pan of brownies. In the same, the same sense, that's what a chemical equation is telling you. Uh, this one, for instance, is saying if you take calcium and water, and you mix those together, you're going to get calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So <clears throat> the problem with this is that it's not balanced. If you were to count up the atoms of calcium over here, okay, there's one atom of calcium and there's one atom over here. Okay, so we're good. Now let's count up the hydrogen atoms. Okay, right now we have two total hydrogen atoms over here, but over here we have one, two, and then three, four. So it's not balanced. And these oxygen or these hydrogens and oxygens over here didn't just come out of nowhere. Basically what's going on is that we're missing coefficients. It's not you take one atom of calcium and one molecule of water and you get this you're going to need a little bit more or a little bit less and that's one thing that we're going to work on. It's called balancing a chemical equation. We're going to be working a lot on methods uh, to do that. Um, but first I want to talk about a mistake that a lot of people make when it, when it comes to these equations. Sometimes people they'll say well okay let's see how many how many hydrogens do we have over here. Well we have four so why don't we just change this to four right here? Well, now we don't have H2O anymore. Basically, we've changed, if you do that, you've changed the recipe. Your recipe said, okay, take one, one thing of brown, you know, one brownie mix and two eggs, and you'll get this. Well, now if you have H4O, that's no longer an egg, you know, because it's supposed to be H2O. And H2O is an atom of oxygen, and then it has two atoms of hydrogen on it. If you add any other atoms to this or take away any atoms, it's no longer water. It's something else altogether. So, like I said before in previous videos, it's very, very important that whenever you see a formula like this, like H2O or CaOH2, Two, that you think of this as one unit, one indivisible unit. So for instance, this is a calcium atom. It would be like this, it's one atom of calcium, and that by itself is one unit. Another calcium atom is not going to come along there and be added to it. It's going to behave as one unit. Likewise with water, we have one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen and that all together behaves as one unit. Now calcium hydroxide, that's what this is called, that's one atom of calcium and then it has two, now remember whenever we see parentheses right here that means that that in there itself is also another unit. So that's like O H like that. So there's one of the OHs, but right here it says there's two of them. So that means that there's another O H on there. And that all together, since that's what the formula tells us or the recipe, that all behaves as one unit. Now finally we have this H2 which is hydrogen gas. Well that's just two atoms of hydrogen that are bound together and they behave as one unit. So now we have our recipe. We know what ingredients we need. So if we're going to go to the store, you know, we call up, "Hey honey, what do I need to pick up?" Uh, I'm going to need some calcium atoms, some H2O, calcium hydroxide and hydrogen. How much should I get? I don't know yet, just get a lot of it. 
So that's kind of the point that we're at now. But now we need to balance all of this. And so let's see what we need to do. Okay, the first thing I do when I'm in this situation, trying to balance a, a chemical equation, I'm going to start with, I'm just going to pick one of the atoms. I'm going to say, okay, calcium. Let's start with that one first. Over here on the left side of the arrow, how many calcium atoms do I have? All right, calcium. Well, I'm looking and I only have one. Okay. Now, what about the right side of the arrow? How many total calcium atoms do I have? Well, again, I only have one. So the calcium set, we're good with calcium. Now, let's just, let's just go along. Now, let's say hydrogen. This is just the next element that I see, the next atom. And I want to see how many on this side do I have total. Well, we have H and 2, so I must have 2. And you can see there's two atoms of hydrogen there. Okay, how about on this side? Well, I have two hydrogens here, so that's two. But I also have another two here, remember, because that's like one and two. So all together, I have four hydrogens on this side. Now over here, finally, we have oxygen. And I only have one of them, one oxygen total. And over here, I have two oxygens, right? Because we had the OH, and we had two of those OHs, so we have two oxygens. So now, I'm going to stick coefficients in front of these. So that's kind of like saying, OK, I know I'm going to need eggs, but how many eggs do I need to make, the, to make this pan of brownies? Well, that's what, that's what we're going to find out. And the way I do it, my method, is pretty much just trial and error. I look at the numbers that I have here and say, OK, I, I'm short on hydrogens and oxygens on this side. I'm going to need twice as many to get as many as I need here. So what number can I put in front of this to give me what I need over here? Well, this is a pretty simple one. And I could see right now that if I, if I put a 2 here, well, now if we were to recount this up, I would have, OK, one calcium atom. And now if we have two of these, instead of just one molecule of H2O, now I have a second molecule. Well, that would be like this. Then we have another oxygen with two more hydrogens on it. And now if I were to count up those total, right? So hydrogens, now we'd have one, two, three, four. And oxygens, I'd have two. Right? I'd just look right here. So I'd multiply two times this, right? And we get four hydrogens and two oxygens. And you can see right there. So now we have, now let's just double check everything here. We have one calcium on this side, one calcium on this side. A total of four hydrogens, because we have these two molecules here, one, two, three, four. And how many hydrogens over here? Well, we have one, two, three, four total. That's good. Now, how many oxygens do I have? I have one here and two here. I'm sorry, two here, because we have the two molecules and the two from here. So now I'm balanced. Now this is a correct chemical equation because it's balanced. And this could get kind of confusing and we're going to go over a lot of examples about this. But, um, and there are some methods that you could use to make, to simplify things and, uh, and make things a little bit easier. But, uh, but most of the time it comes down to trial and error. And, as with everything with chemistry, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes.